This is Restoration Bible Church and Ministries. We are a people of excellence living purposefully. And now, here is God's servant, Reverend Tina Balanta, as she brings you God's word. We trust that you will be blessed as you listen. Dull and the sea over against Balzephon, before it you shall encamp by the sea. For Pharaoh will say of the children of Israel, they are entangled in the land. The wilderness has shut them in. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart that he shall follow after them. And I will be honored upon Pharaoh and upon all his hosts that the Israelites may know that I am the Lord. And they did so. Your enemies will know that there is a God in your life. When God is done with all that concerns you, when he finishes what he has prepared for you, even those that have spoken evil against you will turn and they will say, of a truth, you serve the Most High God. Because that's how God loves to deal with his people. He loves to do things in the lives of his people so that even their enemies will turn and look and say, Kai, it's not not you that did this. It's not you that did this. When the children got to the Red Sea, when the people of Israel, the children of Israel got to the Red Sea, they were afraid because of Pharaoh and his armies, but God already had a plan because it was God that told them to go there. They didn't know, but God said they should go there. Why? Because he wanted to disgrace their enemies. Your enemies will be disgraced where you are concerned in the name of Jesus. And you will look for them, you will not find them. Because God has made a decree concerning them. That because they have touched you as the apple of his eyes, he will visit judgment upon them in the name of Jesus. That is what you'll find. Because that's what God says he'll do. God always knows the end of the matter from the beginning. So don't be afraid of your tomorrow because your father knows what your tomorrow is all about. All we need to do on a daily basis, learn to talk to him and learn to hold on to his hands. And as we do that, he'll walk us through the many tomorrows that are before us in strength and in safety in the name of Jesus. When the children of Israel were hungry in in the wilderness, what did God do? He provided manna for them. He provided quail for them, meat and bread. He provided everything they needed. When they needed water, he brought water out of a rock. So what impossible situation is facing you this morning? Whatever it is, know that the God... The creator of the heavens and earth, who is the God that works miracles? He'll do that miracle for you. He will do the miracle you desire. He'll do that miracle. You know, I heard the other day somebody said that she does not believe in that uh, God is a miracle working God. And I was like, in this day and age, there are still people that don't believe that God does miracles. You will see a miracle in your life. That would leave your mouth hanging open and help you to know that God truly does miracles in the lives of his children in the name of Jesus. God works miracles. The fact that we are here this morning is a miracle. The fact that we woke up out of our bed, out of sleep, because there are people that slept and didn't wake up. The fact that we are here in strength and in health is a miracle. God will continue to do many, many more miracles that... Uh, for you, even in your personal lives, in the name of Jesus. Acts chapter 12. God always has a joker for you as his children. He always has a joker that you are not aware of. But when the joker comes, then you'll know that, yes, God is faithful. Peter was in jail. And as far as Peter was concerned, because his brother had been killed the day before, he knew that his own head was going off. That's what he thought. That's what he thought. He was calm in jail. He was not afraid because his life was in God's hands. But all he knew was because James was not delivered, I'm sure in his own heart he was like, God, into your hands I commit my spirit. Whatever happens will happen. And so he slept. And verse 7 says, Behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, Acts 12, 7. And the light shined in the prison, and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up, saying, Arise up quickly, and his chains fell off from his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself, 
bind on thy sandals. So he did, and he said unto him, cast thy garments about thee and follow me. And he followed him and went out. Peter did not know the end of the matter, but God knew the end of the matter. Peter did not know how that night will end. All Peter had in mind was that when he wakes up in the morning, he was going to be taken to the slaughter room. But God had a, a second plan. God had an alternative arrangement. God had a joker in mind. And the joker was the visit of the angel into that uh, prison room with him. If you need an angel in your situation, God will call, cause angels to show up and give you victory in your situations in the name of Jesus. Peter did not know what, all he knew was he needed God's help. But while he was praying, you know there are times when you are praying and you are believing God, but in your heart you are like, God, this is my prayer. I believe I say, there's, there, there's no way you can answer it. God, you did not answer Mr. A, you did not answer Brother B, you did not answer Brother C. Is it me that you are going to answer? God loves you. God has a plan for you. And because God cares about you, he will answer your own prayers in the name of Jesus. God is not partial. God does not have favorites. As far as I'm concerned, the Bible says you are the apple of God's eye. So you are a favorite to the Father in heaven. And he'll fulfill all that he has written concerning you in this time. Hallelujah. So that's what happened. Peter was delivered. Peter was delivered because God had a plan to save him. God will always put, play the joker where you are concerned. And that joker, joker will come at the last minute. Such that people will know that God has intervened for you in the name of Jesus. In Acts 27, you also find Paul going through a similar situation. Acts chapter 27 from verses 21 to 25. Paul was going through a similar situation. He was in a shipwreck. The difference was that Paul heard from the Lord. Paul heard a voice. Paul knew the end of the matter because God knew the end of the matter and God told him the end of the matter. God telling him the end of the matter made sure that Paul was not afraid in the storm. God does not keep secrets from you. Amen? He gives you his word so that you'll know what your tomorrow will be like. And your tomorrow, according to what God has told me, is full of peace and strength. Your tomorrow is full of increase. Your tomorrow is full of favor. It's full of promotion. It's full of all the good things you're trusting him for. Because that's what he has prepared for you. Hallelujah. And that's what you're going to enjoy even in the days ahead in the name of Jesus. The angel that visited um, Paul went on that ship, what did the angel tell Paul? He said, fear not. Fear not. Because... God has made sure that everybody on this ship will be saved with you. God knows your tomorrow more than you know your yesterday. And because he knows your tomorrow, God will always tell you as you look into your future, fear not what is coming at you. Fear not what you are looking at. Because he has gone ahead and he has made provision for you. God will always say, fear not. No matter where you find yourselves. No matter what you are going through. Because he's always with you. And he has made up his mind that he'll never leave you nor forsake you, even in the walk of life. So you are not alone in all that you're going through. Your father is with you. And your father will walk you through this situation in strength and in health in the name of Jesus. Psalm 23 verse 4. Isaiah 41 verses 10 and 13. Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. Psalm 23, verse 4, Isaiah 41, 10, 13, and then Isaiah 43, 1 to 3. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. I will fear no evil no matter where I find myself. I will fear no evil no matter what situation I'm going through. I will fear no evil no matter what the enemy throws at me. Why? Because I'm not alone. God says, he, the psalmist said God is with him. God was with him. God walks with him through that situation. So God will walk with you through your situations in the name of Jesus. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen ye, 
Isaiah 41. Yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. When God says, Fear not, all he's saying is that when you lie down to sleep, let your eyes sleep well. Let your eyes close well. Don't sleep with one eye open. Don't sleep trying to listen for sounds that you are not supposed to be listening for. But close your two eyes and sleep well. Because he giveth his beloved sleep. The angels of the Lord encamp round about them that fear you. You are not alone in your home. You are surrounded by the angels of the Most High God. And if the angels of God surround you, there is no need for you to be afraid. Because my Bible tells me, I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible tells me that there was one time like that long ago, one angel killed 185,000. Not just 185, but 185,000. Just one angel. So how many are you in your house that the angel cannot protect you? He that keepeth Israel does not slumber nor sleep. He'll watch over you, he'll protect you. And he'll cause you to see the many, many more mornings ahead in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 43, 1. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. He didn't say we'll not pass through, but he said when we go through. And I like the way God phrased it. He said when we go through, he didn't say we'll go and get stuck in the middle. Because just like he took the children of Israel through the Red Sea, God will always take you through the sea of life that you find yourself in. No matter how big the sea is, no matter how deep it is, God does not take you to a, um, through a situation and leave you in the middle. He takes you and takes you out on the other side. You will come out of this situation in the name of Jesus. He says the rivers will not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire you will not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Why? Because I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. God is your Savior. God has a plan for your life. And the plan of God for you, there are things that he has made up his mind he will fulfill. You will walk into God's best for your life in this season in the name of Jesus. Since you were precious in my sight, verse 4, you have been honorable and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. Fear not, for I am with thee. God says fear not because he's not leaving you alone. God has angels surrounding you. He is with you. The blood of Jesus speaks for you. And the, the, the Holy Spirit himself is on your inside giving you the strength you need. You'll walk through all that you find yourself encountering on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. God says, fear not, because he has not given you the spirit of fear, but the spirit of peace and of strength. The peace of God was provided for times like this. The peace of God was provided for times like this. So you need to always remember that the peace of God is available for you. John chapter 16, verse 33 John chapter 16, verse 33. The peace of God was provided for you. Was provided for times like this. We heard a lot about peace in our previous service and in the, um, the week before. John 16, 33. Amplified, I have told you this thing so that in me you may have perfect peace. In the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undoubted, be filled with joy, because I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. God's victory is abiding where you are concerned. The victory is not coming and going, but it's a permanent victory. So whatever it is, every situation know that victory belongs to you in that situation in the name of Jesus. He says, be confident, be courageous, be filled with joy. In spite of the tribulation in the world, in spite of the distress, in spite of the suffering, there are things going on all around us. There are things going on everywhere. 
But Jesus said, in spite of these things, don't allow your peace to be stolen away by the enemy. Allow his peace to remain in you. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. My own peace, not somebody else's peace, but my own peace I give, I bequeath to you. To bequeath means to will. He wills that peace to you. He willed it to you. It's yours permanently. Everywhere you go, peace is meant to follow you. Everywhere you go, every... Please, just put it back. Amplified version, just put it back up for me. Everywhere you go, peace goes with you. The peace of God surrounds you. Because he wants you to be able to walk on a daily basis without fear. Not as the world gives, do I give to you. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. You see, I like the Lord Jesus Christ. He wrote his word and he tells us, he said, do not allow. So when fear comes and we say, I am afraid, it's not God that put fear on us, but it's we that allow the fear to come. It's we that allow the fear to rest upon us. That's why he said, do not be afraid. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Don't let your hearts be afraid. So no matter what you hear, you know that boom, boom, that you hear in your heart, don't allow it. Because it's the enemy. Even if you are sleeping and you open your eyes and you see somebody looking at you that you don't know who he is and where he's coming from, don't be afraid because the blood of Jesus has made a dividing wall between you and that person in the name of Jesus. He has made a dividing wall between you and that person. So don't be afraid of what the enemy throws at you because God's peace has been given to you. The peace that passes all understanding. The peace that no one can, can understand or explain. That peace rests on your inside. And that peace will guide you on a daily basis in the name of Jesus. There are so many things happening, but in him we have peace. And because we have peace, we can relax knowing that he will meet every need of ours. He says the very hairs of our head are numbered. How many of you saw one here this morning as you were combing? You were combing, you looked at your comb. In fact, for some people, it's not only one they saw. They saw plenty. God said the very hairs of our head are numbered. So if he is that detailed enough to know how many they are, because they are numbered means that from num the front here, number one, to the last here, whether it is 10,000 strands of hair you have, God has numbered all of them. So when you were combing your hair this morning, the ones that were coming out, God knew the numbers they were. Number 310 came out. Number, number 450 came out. In fact, number 200 also came out. By the end of the day, about 15 came out. <laughs> and you were like, God, let this thing not finish on my head. But God numbered all of it. And why did, does he do that? So that we can rest assured in the fact that he cares about us. He is concerned about the things that concerned us. And he has gone ahead of us to make provision for everything that we'll ever need in life. God knows your needs. And God will meet every need of yours. In Luke, he says, even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. The same um, scripture, Luke 12, 7. Fear not, therefore, because you are of more value than many sparrows. You are of more value. You are much more important to God than the birds of the air. You are much more important to him. You are special to him. That's why he went out and he gave his best for you. The best that he had is what he gave for you and I. And as we learn to trust in God, as we learn to hold on to his word, he will make sure that everything we need to live life in abundance, he'll bring your way in the name of Jesus. When you go back, um, when you go down in that Luke chapter 12, verse 23, it says the life is more than meat and the body is more than raiment. Consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn. And God feedeth them. How much more are you better than the fowls? And which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? Which of you by worrying can grow taller? That's all he's saying. How many of you have grown taller by worrying? How many of us have become four or five inches taller because we sat down and were worrying about tomorrow? We sat down and were worrying about our bills. 
we sat down and we worried about the last report we got. How many of us grew taller? Nobody grows taller. In fact, instead of growing taller, you get weaker. That's the truth of the matter. The more you meditate on the lies of the enemy, the more you think about what has not happened, the more you think about the bills you have, the more you think about the journey that you are, partaking, you are taking tomorrow and you are not sure of what's happening on the road, the more you think about the negatives, the more you stress yourself out, the more you fill yourself with strength, um, stress and ill health. That's why he said, take no thought, saying, don't take thought about all those things. How do we take thought? We take thought by talking about those things that we are thinking about. Let's learn not to allow what the enemy, you know, like we always say, you cannot stop a bird from flying. But if the bird now wants to make a nest over your head, you have to tell yourself, mm, you cannot do that. Thoughts are free to come. But thoughts are not free to rest in your hearts. Thoughts are free to come through your minds, but they are not free to make a dwelling place in your hearts. As long as those thoughts don't align with the word of God, as long as those thoughts are not saying what God has said concerning you, what God has said about your tomorrow, those thoughts have no business dwelling in your hearts. That's why he said, take no thoughts. He said, why do you take thought for the rest? 26 says, if you are not able to do that which is least, why take you thought for the rest? Why are you thinking about other things if you cannot do the least? What is the least in the eyes of God? Growth. Physical growth. In the eyes of God, growth is natural. When a baby is born, give the baby five years, he's running around. Give the baby another five years, he's preparing for secondary school. Give a baby... Give the baby another 10 years. He's thinking of higher institution and thinking of settling down. Growth is natural. God said we cannot do that which is the least. We cannot do that which is the least. If we cannot do that which is the least, forget about every other thing and allow him to take care of your needs. God will meet every need of yours in the name of Jesus. Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothes the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the ovens, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of a doubtful mind. Don't doubt God. God is faithful. Don't doubt God's ability to protect. Don't doubt God's ability to provide. Don't doubt God's ability to touch you in your body and make you strong and healthy. Don't doubt God's miracle working abilities. That's all he's saying. Because a lot of times when we open our store and there's nothing there, we start wondering, God, where am I going? In fact, especially when you look at the store and you look at your pockets, and the two of them are reading the same meter. You start wondering, God, where am I going? God, what's going to happen? God, where do, where do I turn to? Remember, he cares for the birds. He provides for the birds. He clothes the, the flowers that are in the field. If he clothes the flowers and he feeds the birds, you are much more valuable. God will meet all of your needs in the name of Jesus. God will meet every need of yours in the name of Jesus. That's why I said in verse 32, fear not, little flock. For it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. So do not fret because God is your provider. Do not panic because he who keeps Israel does not slumber nor sleep. And he's not sleeping where you are concerned. He's not sleeping over your life. He's not sleeping when you are asleep. His eyes are open and they are watchful over you. And his angels are guarding you and keeping everything that concerns you. So don't lose your peace because God is a faithful father and he'll fulfill every plan that he has written concerning us in Jesus' name. Psalm 139 verse 16. You can just write it down. It says, all your members were written in God's book even before you were born. Before times began, my life was in your hands. Before times began. My life was in your hand. Before times began, before you were born, God prepared. God has not lost the book. 
If you think he needs to be looking at the book to remember you, he has not lost the book. The book is there. The book is always before him. But even other than the book being before him, he says your names are engraved in his hands. So anytime he raises up his hand, at least anytime I raise my hand, I see what's on my hand. I see the lines on my hand. I see the ring. I see whatever. Anytime I raise my hand. So anytime God lifts up his hand, he sees your name. So even if God were to forget you, which he does not, but even if he were to, anytime he raises up his hand, he sees your name, he remembers you, and he makes sure that every need you have at that point is met. So don't be afraid. Don't look at life and say, God, where are you? What's happening? Remember that God cares for you, and God has made preparation, and God will fulfill all that he has written concerning you in Jesus' name. Psalms 17 verses 8, Psalms 17 verses 7 and 8, and then Deuteronomy 32 verse 10. When Jesus was asleep on the boat, his disciples were afraid, but he knew the end of the matter from the beginning. He had already told them, let's go to the other side. He did not tell them, let us go and sink in the middle. He told them, let us go to the other side. He got into the boat he slept. So when his disciples were panicking on that boat and they came to wake him, they did not tap him carefully. They were like, oh, God, wake up. We're in trouble. He opened his eyes. He did the needful. And then he turned to them and said, where is your faith? Why did he say that? Because when he told them they were going to the other side, he did not say it in a foreign language. You know, it's possible that, uh, how many of us speak French? Very few of us speak French. It's possible that if he had spoken, it's like keep me standing here and telling you in French, let us go to uh, Niger and come back. I, mommy, we did not hear what you said. But when he spoke to them, he spoke to them in a language they could understand. Let us go to the other side. He did not change his mind in the middle. He did not change his mind. When the waves rose up, the waves were trying him, but he did not change his mind. So when things rise up against you, the enemy is trying to see where your faith is at. The enemy is trying to see, does this child of God believe that God really cares about them? Does this child of God believe that God can provide for them? Does this child of God believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all he has said concerning them? That's what the enemy does when he rises up against you. And all God expects us to do at that point in time is to say, peace, be still. God is my provider. So if you like store, you can be empty. We are not going hungry. The angels of the Lord encamp round about us. So if you like or whatever is happening, we are going to sleep in peace. The blood of Jesus was shed on our behalf. That blood is the blood of God himself. So no matter what happens, that blood will speak for me wherever I find myself. Hallelujah. So we need to learn to answer the enemy when he raises up his head. Because there will always be a storm in our lives. Whether it's small storms or big storms. Storms will come against us. What do we say to the storms when they rise up against us? The words we speak to the storms are what determine whether the storms will collapse or not. Or whether they will keep standing. But whatever storm comes against you, they will fall before you in the name of Jesus. As you speak the word of God over situations you face, every storm that rises against you, they will fall for your sake. They will fall before you because the king of kings has given you his word. And the word that you proclaim is the word full of power in the name of Jesus. God's words are yes and amen. God's words, they are yes, they are amen. They cannot fail. So at every point in time, let's learn to answer the storms with the word. Let's learn to answer the, the thoughts flying through our minds with the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart. Yes, that I might not sin against thee, but also that I might not fall before the enemy. You will not fall before your enemies in the name of Jesus. Jesus was not a superman in the boat, just like Paul was not a superman in the ship. The only thing was they knew. They knew the end of the matter from the beginning. Where your life is concerned, what is the end of the matter? What has God told you about your tomorrow? 
Hey, mommy, I don't know. God has not told me anything. I, t I know what he has told you. With long life, he'll satisfy you and show you his salvation. That's what God has said concerning you. Every need of yours, he said he will do exceedingly much more than you can ask or imagine. Everything, whatever you have dreamt about, God said he will bring it to pass where you are concerned. He has said you will fulfill your numbers, the number of your days. You will live to see your children's children. You will live to see your children grow strong and have their own families. You will have your own homes. You will have your jobs. You will have all that you need to fulfill life. That's what God has said concerning you. That's what God has said concerning you. And you might not see it, but I see your names written in the Bible on a daily basis. So all God wants us to do is to remind him of where he has written our names. Remind him of where he has written our names. Remind him on a daily basis. And as we do that, God will always see to it that everything he has written concerning us will come to pass in the name of Jesus. Whose are you this morning? Who do you belong to? Paul knew who he belonged to. Paul knew whose he was. And because he knew whose he was, he knew that the God whom he served was not going to let him drown in that water, in the sea. God will not let you drown in the storms that are facing you in the name of Jesus. Psalm 17 says, verse 7 says, Show thy marvelous loving kindness. O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of thine eye. Hide me under the shadow of thy wings. God saves by his right hand those who put their trust in him. Is your trust in God this morning? If your trust is in God this morning, God saves, God protects, God provides for. There is no need to fear. If your trust is in the King of Kings, who is your Heavenly Father? And in the Lord Jesus Christ, who is your senior brother? You will not lack anything. Because even if God has to raise help from you, from a foreign land, God will raise help for you. For you. And those helps will meet you where you are in the name of Jesus. He says, the psalmist goes to say, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me under the shadow of your wings. And when you go to Deuteronomy 32.10, Talking about um, Jacob, about Israel, the Bible says he found him in a desert land in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him, he kept him as the apple of his eyes. Number one, the psalmist was saying, Lord, keep me as the apple of your eyes. Number two, uh, Jacob said, God has already kept me. Whichever one you want to say, at the end of the day, God will keep you as the apple of his eyes. And God will provide for you and meet your every need in the name of Jesus. Everything you have need of has been provided for. All you need to do is to sign the check. Fill, in fact, the check has been signed. Fill the check with what you need. What is your need? What are you requesting God to do for you? What are you asking him to provide for you? He has given you a blank check. Write what you need in that blank check. Present that check to the Father. And as you present, you know, it's like you present over the counter. They'll look at it, they'll stamp, and they'll say, go ahead, go to the store. Go to the store. The other day as I was praying, I, I just remember that now. As I was praying, the Lord opened my eyes, and I found myself in a storeroom in heaven. And there were things in the storeroom. The first set of things I saw were limbs. I saw legs, I saw hands in the storeroom in heaven. And I was like, ah, ah. If, at that point, I was like, where am I that I, they are? Then I said, okay, the only place you'll find limbs and they are not bleeding. <laughs> and as I was looking, the Lord took me to another place and I saw the books. I saw books with names on them. And the Lord said, as long as my children are willing to stay close to me, everything I have written about them, I will bring to pass. He said that my children should not be afraid of their tomorrow because I have written in details everything I want to do concerning them. And as they learn to talk to me on a daily basis and remind me of my word over them, they will start to see those things come to pass in their lives. God does not forget his children. 
God has things prepared for you. And before your two eyes, you'll see those things and you'll enjoy them in this life in the name of Jesus. God is faithful where you are concerned and he'll do all that he has written. I saw other things, but let's stop here. Just know that your book is there. And your book was not hidden. The books were not hidden. You know, it was not a case of having to bring cartons out to try and locate. It was like there were shelves were this and the books were just there. You could just walk up to anyone. I looked at a few. You could just walk up to anyone and see what's inside them. And one other thing God told me was this. When he changes your garments, it reflects. It reflects in your life. There were some people that the stories at the beginning of the book was different from the stories at the end. And he said that was because their garments had been changed at some point. So I don't know where you're coming from this morning. Let's rise to our feet. I don't know where you're coming from. I don't know what your story has been like. I don't know what it is that you feel God has done or has not done for you. If you need a garment change, know that your father has made provision for that garment change. And the garment will be your size. And when people see you wearing that garment, they'll see a king, a prince, and a princess walking because they are children of the Most High God in the name of Jesus. Just talk to God this morning. Talk to your father this morning. He has prepared things for you. He knows the end of the matter from the beginning. He has things that he has made available. Your natural eyes might not see them, but the things are there. They are written in his books, the books that he has concerning you. Learn to go to God on a daily basis and say, Papa, I don't know what page I am, but I need to open the next page. I need to enter the next page. I need what is in that next page to come out. And as we do that, those things will show forth. Whether you're trusting God for the fruit of the womb or for a life partner, whether you're trusting God for business resources or whatever, they are all written in your books. And as you call God's name, as you call his name, he'll cause all those things to come your way in the name of Jesus. Precious Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that you know the end of our, the, our lives from the beginning. This, your word says yeah, your counsel will stand because you declare the end of the matter from the beginning. Father, where the lives of our people are concerned, I thank you because the end of the matter that you have written concerning them is what they are going to enjoy and walk into in the name of Jesus. Father, they might be troubled in their hearts and wonder, God, what is the end of the matter going to be? But I want to thank you, Father, because the end of the matter that you have declared speaks of good, it speaks of increase, it speaks of protection and provision, it speaks of everything good you have written concerning them. And that is what they are going to walk into in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that as we enjoy the provisions you have made, we'll also enjoy the fact that our lives are entwined with yours, very close to yours. Your word says you keep us as the apple of your eyes. Father, as we trust our lives to you, we know that we will fulfill the number of our lives here in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, because the highest sacrifice was made on our behalf by the highest being on the highest altar. Therefore, no matter what storm the enemy throws against our people, no matter what storm the enemy throws against anybody under this covering, none of us will pay with our lives what Jesus has already paid with his blood in the name of Jesus. Father, we bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for listening to today's message. Do join us same time next week. Follow us on our social media handles, Facebook and Instagram at Restoration Ministries International, Twitter and Mixilar at RBCM Online, and our website is www.rbcmonline.org. You can also be part of our live power park services every Wednesday by 5.30 p.m. and on Sunday by 7 a.m. and 8.30 a.m. respectively. 
at Restoration International Conference Center, RICC, Romanew Extension, Kaduna South. God bless you.